My name is Annette Lott. I am uh, currently the president of Fruit Belt United, which is one of several uh, resident organizations in the Fruit Belt. And uh, over five years ago, all of the organizations came together as we began to see how the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus um, building was impacting upon our community and a lot of pro problems uh, were coming up. So we came together and probably the most pressing issue at that particular time was the issue of people not being able to park there, not being any parking for the residents because the employees uh, from the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus were taking up all the parking spaces. So we found that many of our people didn't have parking spaces, not only for themselves, but for our seniors, for medical uh, personnel that maybe would come and visit you on a regular basis. There was no parking for them either. So we came together to address those issues and to begin to look at how the building that was taking place at the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus was impacting the neighborhood. Uh, we went from door to door, had a number of community meetings, and we began to find that there was a lot of other issues. Uh, there was issues with the plumbing systems that was occurring as a result of the uh, building that was constantly going on. It was issues between the workers and their attitudes and things that they would say to the people who lived there who might would address them about um, hemming them in actually in their own community. There was problems about where things were built. And so we began to sit down and put all of these things down on paper. And originally we came up with what we call the community benefit agreement. Myself and others went on the internet and began to look at uh, were there any other communities that were having these problems? And we found out that all across the country where um, a number of developers were literally taking over cities were having the same problem and, and how uh, residents were actually impacted upon and literally being moved out of their communities. And we decided that we would do whatever we could to stop this. Uh, we noticed that on these work sites there were no people uh, of minority status working on these sites even though they had told us that there would be a number of people, minorities working on these sites. Uh, that when we attempted to talk to people at Niagara Medical Campus they didn't even want to talk to us uh, about any of the issues that we had. So we wrote a community benefit agreement. And then one of us, I, uh, I can't remember, one of the groups found out about um, Partnership for Public Good and um, wrote a, pl a plank, a platform for PPG to support our efforts. And around that same time, we, in the course of doing our um, looking on the internet, we found out that the solution that some of the uh, communities that come up with was a land trust. So we thought this is perfect. It fit right in with what was going on with us and, and certainly provided an opportunity for the residents to have some say in what was going on in the community. And thankfully, PPG accepted our plank and decided that they would come and assist us. We were just people who had run uh, community organizations because many of us, like myself, I grew up in that neighborhood and been in that neighborhood 60 something years. And we love the community. We love the feel of community that it does not take place in many other areas in Buffalo. Everyone knows uh, everyone else there. And uh, we get along, we have community picnics and there's not a family uh, that I would go to in the community who doesn't either know me or they knew my parents or they know one of my eight brothers and sisters. So we have a very close knit uh, community and have been ever since I've been there. So PPG came and they began to assist us. They gave us support and, and I must say, uh, prior to PPG coming, you know, I had spoken to, and many of the other organizations had spoken to our politicians um, and others in the community about what was going on. 
And I can tell you that most of the individuals basically kind of told us there wasn't much that we could do because the uh, because of the power of the people who were investing in the community that basically the few of us didn't have much that we could do about it. Now that was very unfortunate because um, my experience is this. You know, when a community is hurting and people reach out and say, this is how we're hurting, we don't really need the naysayers. We, want be we need people who are going to support us and say, Yes, we understand how this is impacting on the community, and this is what you can do or point us in the direction of things that we can do in order to alleviate that suffering of the people. And PPG has really, really helped us in that, in that way, and I am thankful uh, for that. Um, they've given us a lot of assistance, beginning with simply being willing to listen to us when other people would not and giving us the support and saying to us, you know what, you have a legitimate grievance and you have the ability to impact upon what is going on in your community. Most people will tell you, you know, with people I talk to, I talk to lawyers, past politicians, and they basically told us there wasn't anything that we could do and did not support our efforts. And I, today I look back upon that and I understand that that has been the history of Buffalo, that when the community rises up and says, this is how things are going on in our community, and this is how it's impacting us, no one wants to listen. In fact, that is why we're in the shape that we're in now. When people complained about what was going on Main Street, when they closed up Main Street, no one wanted to listen to the community. Now today, they're talking about what a mistake that was. When they tore up Humboldt Park, and bombed it out to put the 198 there and the com people who lived in that community had something to say they didn't want to hear it today years and years after the fact they can see what a terrible mistake that was that they made so i'm hoping that we will be able to help the city by avoiding another mistake by not listening to the people who live there in that community um, the theme for PPG this year is beauty and democracy. And as I thought about that theme, I thought about uh, what democracy means. Uh, and, you know, my own definition is, is that democracy means that people have power. Um, we have the power to come together to, uh, to vote and elect and say what our grievances are. Uh, and select political parties and select agendas for our parties. Uh, but on the other side of that, democracy is about a mindset. Even though the people have the right and the majority has the ability to select whoever, that individual or that political party or agenda must still represent everyone I think that when we think about uh, the majority, and we're only going to we're only going to look at the needs of that my, uh, majority, that that's not democracy. Democracy is a mindset that I am going to uh, go forward. My agenda is not only going to uh, be for the people who elected me, the majority, but I'm going to look at how the agenda that I have impacts all of the people. When we don't do that, then that is not democracy um, at work. We have to, I believe we owe all our citizens the ability to be able to say, this is what hurts and harms me and we must listen to what it is they're saying and begin to take uh, heed to their grievances because when we don't, and we say we're only going to listen to the majority and we're only going to address the things that impact the majority, then we're leaving a whole host of people out and we're basically saying their needs, their wants, their desires, uh, their ability to live a fruitful life in their community doesn't matter. And I don't think that that is what our forefathers meant by democracy. I think uh, for me, I may not agree always 
with what people were saying, even in my own small organization, Fruit Belt United. I don't always, as the president, agree with the dissenting opinion. However, even as the president, what I realized, my job is not just to implement policy or, or say, well, you know, I'm sorry, that's your opinion and I'm going to just scoot you aside, but to be able to listen to what you're saying and to allow not just what you say, but what it is you're willing to do and say, well, okay, let's try that and see how it works. And I will tell you, as a result of doing that, I have found out that that dissenting opinion sometimes has been the right one and a majority opinion has been wrong. Um, we have to allow people uh, who have sat, like in the Fruit Belt, I remember when the community, when there was a lot of drug addiction there, when there was a lot of fighting, uh, uh, there was a lot of gangs and whatever, and my parents and other people stayed there and we worked, with those, worked within those communities. And I remember my father, who was long since passed, kept up his home, had work done there, and said, you know what, this is our home and we're going to thrive in the midst of this and we're going to try to do what we can do in order to help. I remember going to uh, block club meetings with my mother. That was what we did. We stayed there, we tried to work with the people who were there to keep our community. Um, and in fact, the reason that the community is where it is now is because of those individuals who stayed there and fought to keep that community uh, and that spirit of, of love that was there. We fought, we stayed there. We didn't back away, my parents didn't move, they didn't go buy a house someplace else. We stayed there, we worked with the people, uh, we loved each other and we uh, put value into that property by doing work there when it needed to be done. So we didn't abandon it. And uh, a lot of times that's what happens. We decide, okay, that's not uh, what we want and we're just going to abandon it. We'll just shovel it over, tear it down, and we'll build something new, bring some new people in. We want development in the Fruit Belt. We want development. However, we do not want development at the expense of moving out the people who have stayed there and who have fought this fight. Uh, today, the rents in the Fruit Belt are $1,500. Now, I've lived in a lot of places, New York City included. Uh, $1,500, that's not a lot of money. You talk to people in New York City, to them, that's not a lot. But if you look at Buffalo and you say Buffalo's rent is $1,500, that's way, 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 that's almost triple what the rents have been and but this is what developers are doing they want to make a dollar they want to make a dollar forget about the community spirit forget about uh, what we have suffered in order to keep the community together let me just come in buy it whatever and keep uh, and make as much money as i can that's not what we want for our community we want to build up our community so that our children will be able to live in a community where people love you and care about you. And, um, and I thank PPG for helping us um, in doing that, that when we came to them, they didn't tell us that our thoughts and our grievance were ridiculous and that we should go someplace else. They sat with us, talked with us, and made us realize how powerful those dreams are. They've also helped us in terms of partnering with other groups locally, statewide, and begin to look on a national scale at how many other areas are doing the same thing. And that has been a wonderful experience. So Ms. Lott, I think you've described so well the um, democratic process that has helped the community in the Fruit Belt move toward Buffalo's first community land trust. Um, so before we close, I'd love for you to just think about is there a particular moment or story where recognizing beauty, maybe it's the beauty of the land and the fruit belt, the beauty of the historic homes that you said your families have worked so hard to preserve and maintain, or the beauty of the relationships that are in that community for generations. Um, when did a kind of moment of beauty make a real difference? I think 
that in our area, in the Fruit Belt, there's so many moments. Um, and I'll just tell you the recent, most recent one. Fruit Belt United, we've been an organization for 20 something years, but again, we know, we all know each other. We know the families, we know the mothers, the fathers, the brothers and sisters. Yesterday, I received a call. Fruit Belt United, when a person passes, we always write a letter of condolence to that family. And when someone called me and said, Miss Jones passed, I knew who Miss Jones was, you know. And tomorrow's Miss Jones' funeral. And as a representative of Fruit Belt United, I will be there with that letter of condolence to let her family know that our organization supports them. I don't know many communities where that happens, where we keep up with each other on that kind of intimate basis. I don't want to lose that. Um, when my brothers, they live, my brothers, some of my brothers live in other communities, their children, they bring their children to the fruit belt and they said, this is where I feel like my children are safe. I can let my children play out in the street. Those moments of community, oneness, weeness, and love, I don't ever want us to lose that. And to me, that is democracy at work. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we just invite everybody to come and celebrate with us Beauty and Democracy at PPG's 10th anniversary party on October 5th at 6 p.m. at the Albright Knox. Thank you, Ms. Locke. And thank you for inviting me.